First of all, I would like to thank organizers for giving me a chance to talk in this conference. Um, I'm going to talk about two-dimensional extent homotopy field theories. More precisely, I will tell what they are and what we know about their classification. Let me, uh, let me start with two-dimensional uh, topological field theories. If you remember uh, Claudia Salk, she mentioned two, two ways of studying topological field theories. One is uh, as a functorial field theories, and the second one is factorization algebras. This is completely just factorial study, study of topological field theories. Let me, rem let me remind you what is a two-dimensional topological field theory. It's just a symmetric monoidal functor from coborism category to any other symmetric monoidal category. Let's take this to be category of vector spaces and linear transformations. And uh, what is an object of this category is just oriented circles. And morphisms are just oriented to different morphism class of oriented cobordisms between cir circles. And like an example of a cobordism or, or a morphism in this category is like something like this. And the first thing is to realize is that this, this category is not hard to understand. Basically, objects are just disjoint of circles. And the cobordisms are uh, just uh, like this. And just writing, uh, it is not very hard to write generators and relations for the cobordisms of this category. And then it, it is un under this union, it is, it is really well understood. And they are classified by commutative Frobenius algebras, like 2D TFTs, Abram classified them six by commutative from inside of us. And uh, we want to understand uh, to, uh, homotopy field theories, which are introduced by Triab in 1999, which are basically just Triab applied the axioms of topological field theory to manifolds and cobordisms, uh, which uh, equipped with maps to uh, some fixed target space. Therefore, to define uh, HFT, homotopy field theory, we need to fix a target space. We call it X. And for this talk, it has always be a KG1 space, which is the homotopy type of KG1 space. Basically, want, we want to understand those uh, two-dimensional TFTs with principal G bundles for discrete group G. And how do we do this? We just take homotopy class of maps to this KG1 space, which is a pointed space. And now we define this new category, X cob 2, whose objects are pointed oriented circles with homotopy class of pointed maps to this space. And cobord uh, ob morphisms are cobordisms equipped with homotopy class of maps to like this point to pointed homotopy class of maps to this target space. And we can think of just taking the universal cover of this by pulling back along this homotopy class, we have a principal G bundle over this thing. And try to classify such TFTs by crossed Frobenius like algebras to the HFTs with target X, which is the KG1 space, by crossed Frobenius algebras. What is what is crossed Frobenius algebras? What is crossed? Cross replaced uh, replaces the commutativity. What I mean, we have a G algebra when we take two elements, A B is not necessarily B A unless G is commutative. But if, if G is not commutative, we have an automorphism of algebra which replaces this commutativity. This is the cross structure. So it's a G graded. Sort of yes, it's a G graded algebra with inner product, non-degenerate inner product, and there's an automorphism of 
and the row is here. Yeah, row is an automorphism of A. And it's like conjugation type. And we also have extended field theories. which are symmetric monoidal two-functors, two-dimensional extended field theories, symmetric monoidal two-functors from extended bordism category to some symmetric monoidal bi-category. Let's take the bi-category of algebras, bi-modules, and bi-module maps. Christian Mepris classified them uh, in terms of some separable symmetric Frobenius algebras. And he introduced this by category. Let me tell what it is. Objects or morphisms into morphisms. What are the objects of this board? They're just oriented points, like this. And objects of this, this by category, just K algebras. And one morphisms are just bordisms between points. Like this. And here one morphisms are by modules. And here two morphisms are certain type of surfaces with faces. What do I mean by certain type? I will make it more precise. I mean by certain type is this, this vertical boundaries are always trivial or product type. There is no vertical boundary like this. They are always product of the zero manifolds and the boundaries at the corners. And here two morphisms are by module maps. And Christian Mepris classifies such symmetric monoidal two functors in terms of specific K algebras, which are separable symmetric Frobenius G algebras. Let me write it here. To the extended TFTs. By separable Symmetric Frobenius algebras. Well, what does this line segment mean? Is a natural question. This theory is also called zero one two theories. We want to say because we also well, the the data that this gives us is assigns some some algebraic data to points, homomorphisms, and bordisms and bordisms between bordisms. What these line segments means is this. We can think of HFTs as generalization of this, because for each homotopy field theory, by just taking trivial homotopy classes, we just get a topological field theory. And similarly, if it's, uh, in, a, in a similar way, if we start with an extended field theory and we restrict ourselves to just forget the points, but circles and more circles and cobordism between circles, we again get non-extended TFT. Once we have this diagram, it's an interesting question, I believe, is to understand what are two-dimensional extended HFTs. And the goal of this talk is to define these things, these gadgets, and classify what they are. Any questions so far? Well, can you vary the target category at all, or will you stick to? No, we, we to define HFT, we just fixed pointed point point target. I mean, but you could change. Yes, to yes, mm -hmm. yes. There is a Christian Mepris has a classification for any symmetric monoidal by category. We have we have a similar. It is not as uh, clear as this case, but 
It is given by some data in this by category, symmetric model by category, and we have we have a similar result generalizing this thing. And definition of two-dimensional extended homotopy field theories is fairly straightforward. We do the same thing as we did here. What we do, we fix this KG1 space pointed and consider pointed homotopy classes. So what do we have? We can we can this this since these are all pointed homotopy classes, we can just associate we can canonically assign some group elements to these things. Like but we want specifically for two morphisms to put these vertical faces, boundaries to be identity. Where E is identity element. Yes, we always want x to be kg1. HFT's tribe defines for arbitrary CW complex, but for, for general arbitrary CW complex, there is not a well, there is not a classification theorem. But once we take KG as a kg1 space, we have good classification theorem. And that is the kind of where this homotopy name comes from. When we take space X as a, any arbitrary CW complex, we just consider maps of these things, not homotopy class of maps. But once we take KG1, there is no higher K invariance. Maps can be replaced by homotopy class of pointed maps. This is the definition of, if we define this symmetric monoid by category of this type. Could you, could you replace X instead of by just a KG1, by a KG1 Sort of in a sort of a Pasnikov tower to level two or something. Like there are there are work not not in this way, but there are works for such things like KG two and non extended case. But in this case, we just stick to the KG one. Yes, this is the definition of two dimensional extended homotopy field theory. And now, what is classification the theorem? Is this? There is an equivalence of, of by categories. Which is let me tell what these by categories are. Objects of this by this by category are just extended TFTs, extended HFTs. One morphisms are just symmetric monoidal transformations between them, and two morphisms are symmetric monoidal modifications. And this by category objects are what we call quasi biangular. G algebras and one morphisms are compatible G graded more the context and two morphisms are equivalences of G grade more the context. Let me tell you what is um, this classifying object, quasi biangular G algebra. Its name is a bit strange, but it is just a some sort of, some sort of Frobenius G algebra. We call this quasi biangular algebras because it generalizes biangular algebras introduced by Triam in the study of lattice HFTs. But 
their definition is just not that complicated. A caused by angular G algebra. is a Frobenius G algebra. That means a G algebra with a non-degenerate inner product such that the principal component, the identity component, AE is separable. And each component, AG, is both left and right rank one AE modules. In short, in here we have quasi biangular algebras, G algebras. What they are, they are basically just copy of this for each component. And here again, we have to go here and go here. Here we just restricted those maps with trivial maps. It gives here, which just restricts to identity comp this principal component. And here we just restrict to just circles and cobalt in between them. A G grade Morita context, this is G grade Morita context is defined by Boysen in 94. It's just a, uh, it's a generalization of usual Morita context in the way that uh, modules become G-graded. What, what does it mean? Basically, uh, G-graded Morita context between G algebras B is a quadruple um, B where is our unit and co-unit of the adjunction, that the usual things. Um, <coughs> by module map, and And these both are invertible. And this M and N are G graded modules. Like what do I mean by this? Like, like BG, acts on MH, and GH, and similarly for N. So this just mean that you have a two one category there? A what? two zero category? Yes. Yes, it is. It is two zero. Yeah, these are all invertible. And the equivalence of great mortar context is just a straightforward thing. If you have another great mortar context, it's just a map of bimodule maps which commutes with these things. Invertible bimodule maps. Any other question? The main corollary of the main corollary is the structured cobordism hypothesis in a very special case. The corollary of the work. when k, let me take this uh, algebra k, when k is algebraically closed field of characteristic zero, the GSO2 structured
to your so to structured cobordism hypothesis holds uh, for a 2D so to structured alt k valued extended TFTs holds true. proof of this is basically just comparison with uh, or Dovidovich GSO2 fix homotopy GSO2 fixed point computation computation where she has just semi simple uh, G graded algebras over comp like this field, and each component of the thing is just uh, rank one principal component. But a semi simple, a separable algebra is just the same as semi simple, but in, under this condition, Cartesian zero fields. If you, uh, maybe I can remind to people what is the structured cobordism hypothesis briefly. For a group gamma, gamma structured cobordism hypothesis, which is due to Lurie, it is stated as follows symmetric monoidal functors to any symmetric monoidal n category. As, 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 I need to explain what these are. This is an equivalence of symmetric monoidal infinite n categories. For any symmetric monoidal infinite n category C, this board N is fully extended bordism category with structure uh, gamma, which means we have a principal G bundles over all manifolds, principal gamma bundles over manifolds, and these are all TFTs, symmetric monoid, the infinite time category of symmetric monoid, uh, symmetric monoid infinite time functors. And here we have this full subcategory of infinite time subcategory of C consisting of fully dualizable objects. This is, once we take the subcategory, we take the underlying infinite group point and we take the homotopy fixed points. Right, this is basically on gamma e gamma and this specific case we have the correspondence does Davidovich compute homotopy fixed points and classify such extended HFTs with the structures and we, we have our proof does not use any cobordism hypothesis and we get the same result in this in this case Any question? Not exactly. Uh, I can tell a couple of words about the proof of this work. Basically, proof in a sentence, we just generalized some of the techniques Schumer Priest introduced in his thesis to this manifolds equipment maps to this KG1 space. How do they go? It is this way. He has a planar decomposition theorem. And we make it into G planar decomposition theorem. What it is, it is basically replacing those objects with diagrams, with some combinatorial data. And we encode, what, what I did is just encode this homotopy class of maps or just, just these labelings into his diagrams consistently and to get uh, a G-planar decomposition theorem. Like what does these diagrams in, a, in dimension one? It is basically just Morse theory. It's just consists of, diagram consists of critical values of Morse function, which is just in this case projection, 
and some, some nice open cover. Here we have some G label and we encode this adding this G data in here with some additional data on this diagram. In dimension two, he stratifies this jet bundles for a surface sigma and he gets the similar data in some diagram in R3, in R2. And in, in four and since we take equal diffeomorphism class of surfaces, he also do this is like two-dimensional uh, Morse theory. And then but since we have diffeomorphism classes, he also stratifies this jet spaces like two-dimensional self theory. How these diagrams are related. Understand? And we do similar things in in his diagrams. We add some additional data which just encodes this uh, this characteristic maps of the X, this maps, this characteristic maps of the manifolds. And we get the G polynomial the composition theorem and the, his theorem. And wh why these are useful, then once we have this G polynomial the composition theorem, we basically replace this category with equivalent category, category of pillar diagrams. This category just consists of diagrams. And this is freely generated. And Schumer Priest has a coherence theorem for symmetric monoidal two functors out of freely generated by categories. Like any, it says, that means, what, what do I mean by freely generated? There is a list of generators for objects, one morphisms, two morphisms, and relations between two morphisms. And the coherence theorem says symmetric monoidal two functors out of such freely generated by categories are precisely determined up the equivalent, up the equivalence to where generators go subject to relations. And that gives the classification. That's exactly what he did. And what the, the additional data that we encode in this diagram does not change anything in this algebraic methods. Yeah, yeah that's. Modify your proof to also get like a framed version or unoriented version or something else? Framed version is done by Piotr. And un unoriented, I, we have the same thing. Yeah, I have an unoriented case, just generalizing the Schumer Priest unoriented case. Similar way. We have kind of G stellar algebras, again, up to G greater Morta coolances, Morta context. Or like a general statement for general? Yeah, for, for, for we have a result for any target, just as in this, which just consists of some uh, data, which is the image of the generators and relations in here. But for any like group mapping to O2 or something? Like could you do like a, a spin case? A spin case, uh, hopefully next project. There are some work not complete the work on by someone else to relate to spin two dimension spin field theories with homotopy field theories. Uh, yeah, I'll try to do this. There is no work yet for spin case, but yeah, possibly. Do you have a favorite example? I have a favorite example of G algebra, it's just matrix algebra works sure. for this one. Matrix algebras are works, and or group rings also work, sure. or cos two normalized two cos cycles works. Okay. Are the examples, yeah. or just taking any anything with this and copies of G copies of this. Sure. Just okay. it's not boring example. One. Let's thank the speaker again.